While I've been up in the skies with the air ambulance, Sarah's been to the Cairngorms to investigate how attempts to restore one of Scotland's natural wonders could also help us combat climate change. Over a fifth of Scotland's landmass is covered in peatlands. These fragile habitats are home to many rare species of birds and plants and are the most effective carbon sink on the planet. They absorb much more carbon from the atmosphere than they release into it. Peatlands take thousands of years to develop and because they lock in carbon it is vital that they're looked after. But over the past century, modern pressures have led to the loss of much of this type of fragile habitat. Over the decades, large areas of peatlands have been drained for agriculture and forestry, or the peat itself harvested for fuel. Consequently, the ability of Scotland's peatlands to absorb and retain carbon has reduced. But something is now being done. For the first time in Scotland, here in the Cairngorm National Park, new techniques are being used to help restore degraded peatlands. There's about three and a half hectares, and the peat there is about seven metres deep. Stephen Kokorin is the peatland project officer for the park. So Stephen, uh, big machines at work behind us, what's going on here? Well, they're cutting this material to help um, revegetate the dry peat, sort of bare peat area. And what we're after... You grab some. ...is this sort of stuff here. And what do you do with this? What they do is they cut this. This machine at the behind us here is cutting this up uh, into a sort of brass material and they lay that across the surface of the bare peat. The harvested brash, a mixture of mosses and heather, knits into the dry peat, helping retain water and allowing new vegetation to grow. If we can restore the bog, uh, it will then stop the, the carbon releasing into the atmosphere. So straight away you have a huge uh, benefit. But then the other key thing it does, it then starts to store carbon. It, it soaks up carbon from the atmosphere and that can then, and that then forms peat and that will then stay locked in has peaked for thousands of years. The technique has been hugely successful in England. Nearly four and a half thousand acres of peatlands have been restored in the Yorkshire National Park alone. So this is an exciting moment because it's the first time the brash has ever been spread and this huge spreader behind us is about to head out onto the peatland. Stephen assures me it's not going to sink. Fingers crossed it will make it over there. We'll soon find out. Damage has been caused to this area of peatland either by previous cutting or fire. Stephen hopes spreading the brash over the bare peat will kickstart regrowth of the sphagnum moss. Once the spreading is finished, Stephen is keen to show me the result. We want to get sphagnum growing back, and that's what we've got here. This beneath is our feet. Beneath our feet, it's nice and spongy and wet. Nice and squelchy. And we've got that's lots fine. of sphagnum down here, different colours, mm -hmm. to different spaces. And this is what we're trying to get back on the ball. This is the key thing. And how long before you know it's going to be successful? Well, we, we anticipate that these will start to regrow next summer. So there'll be sphagnums growing back on the surface of the bog next summer. That soon? That soon. And within you know, five to ten years, they should be fully restored. As part of a three-year plan, over £10 million is being invested to help reclaim these fragile habitats. I hope it succeeds, not just for the flora and fauna that will flourish, but because of the help these rejuvenated peatlands will provide in the fight against climate change. Focusing on the Scottish countryside isn't just the preserve of landward. The Scots magazine has been doing just that for the last 275 years. Read across the globe by expats as well as here at home, it's believed to be the world's oldest magazine. Over the years, it's covered everything from the Battle of Culloden to the creation of the new Scottish Parliament. First published in Edinburgh in 1739, it then moved around the country, but in 1927, DC Thompson in Dundee took over, and it's been published here ever since. I'm 
here in Dundee to find out the secret of the magazine's ongoing success. Current editor Robert White wants to show me the first edition from February 1739. It's kept under lock and key in DC Thompson's basement archive. <laughs> 